Hello. In the realm of the video games... No fucking way, I actually just said in the realm of the video games. <laughs> oh, let's try that again. Hello. In the realm of video games, the soundtrack is a very important part of making one. Many times the soundtrack will be specifically engineered to be a perfect fit with its associated game, not just made for the game, but made inspired by the game, made with love for the game, made with care for what the tone and feel of it is. Sometimes this goes as planned, it's just good enough for things to be what they need to be and it gets by. It's usually forgettable, but it does its job. These soundtracks are usually the ones people barely notice. These games don't have bad music, it's just very obvious the music was not the priority. Well, sometimes. Once in a blue moon, you might say. Game soundtracks transcend just being a good soundtrack for a game, and they carry that game. Further than it ever was intended to go, they speak the language of the story, they create a story when it's missing all through song. Usually engineered by a single person or a small group of very talented single persons. Because sometimes, game soundtracks shape the world they are made for. Sometimes, game soundtracks make a game. A soundtrack can be a lot of things. The most common answer from most people when asked what is your favorite video game soundtrack leads people down the rabbit hole of Mick Gordon, an Australian composer that has done music for Prey 2017, which has fucking great music by the way, the whole game is honestly super underrated. Who needs a System Shock remake? We've got a System Shock remake at home! He also did the Wolfenstein reboots, oh and uh, of course, just this uh, little franchise you may have heard of called the Doom Remakes. Do I, do I really have to say any more? Do I have to say anything else? It's the only thing they fear is you. It's a masterpiece. Like, do I really need to explain why, the, why this is good? Before these tracks, I didn't know what it sounded like to be in a pure primal rage, tearing demons to shreds left and right. It really captures the feel of Doom that nobody ever really knew was there. Doom has always been about going fast, killing demons, and working towards a seemingly impossible goal. The soundtrack wonderfully reflects that. It feels like an orchestra of rock like an entire massive group of people fighting each other musically. It's like they all just tried to kill each other and somehow this beautiful orchestral nightmare was born. But yeah, this one guy, fucking incredible. A little lost child just absolutely jammed one day. Speaking of, The Binding of Isaac is a classic roguelite. I would go through the entire history of the game, but there's literally so much to cover that I would be here for over an hour. What I want to talk about today is the absolutely fantastic mod, and now actually part of the game, Anti-Birth, which was later repurposed into Repentance, which is pr fucking, that's great, I love seeing that shit. That last DLC is actually pretty good too. The game is fun, and it generally works well. It's a story about a small boy being attacked by his mother and her crazy god shenanigans and hiding in the basement, fighting horrible monsters and endlessly horrifying creatures. Well that isn't exactly what's going on, but I'd rather not ruin that. It's a great game. Most importantly, the original Anti-Birth soundtrack is just fucking incredible. Especially the basement track, Innocence Glitched. It is a perfect embodiment of what Isaac is. It's dark, confused at first, scared and wandering, but as it starts to rise and eventually crash, it makes way for a more angry, beautiful, dangerous creature. It makes way for Just keep rushing me like this. I'm leaving. Good. Leave. We'll be fine without you. Anytime I'm playing this game and that track kicks up, I just get shivers down my spine. I lose my breath. Another great track is the mausoleum theme, Machine in the Walls. It accurately portrays this very weird feeling that you're inside of a larger creature that is alive, and it just doesn't want you to be there. Hey, hey, do you get it? Hey, hey, look, hey, look it's a callback to my, my Lost in Vivo video. Also, I just learned today that Kira saw that video, so hell yeah. 
but I love the Anti-Birth soundtrack. There's a mod that you can grab here on the Steam Workshop that allows you to use the Anti-Birth soundtrack within Repentance, which is just absolutely thank you. I love this soundtrack. It's somehow cold and vicious and terrifying. Hotline Miami is a game that, while great on its own, wouldn't have been much of a smash hit as it was without the hundreds of tracks made by tens of artists, all just for a game about one crazy guy killing people because the phone told him to. I was gonna make a video on Hotline Miami 2, but I really didn't want to play it again because pain. Good game, but pain. <laughs> Both of these games, however, have incredible pumping tracks like Le Perve by Carpenter Brut, Hydrogen by Moon, Deep Cover by Sun Ara. These are all iconic tracks now because of Hotline Miami, so I think it qualifies for this whatever the fuck I'm doing here. These tracks really make you feel like a murderer. <laughs> it really makes you feel like Batman. I can't fucking believe I wrote that in the script. But really, I can't tell you how many times I've played Blade and Sorcery with some of these tracks, and it just works so well. These songs were designed with violence in mind on a thematic level. Even some of them are downtime, but they still have an air of violence underneath the surface. I can confidently say I don't think these games would be the same without their incredible music. Speaking of the previous sentence... In Sound Mind is a game I originally was going to make a whole video about, but on second thought it felt more right to put it here. It's a game made by a very small team. These are people who used to make Half-Life horror mods. Knowing that, this game is actually very impressive from a bunch of Half-Life modders. Overall it's good, I really like it, but it's made into something really special because of the soundtrack created by the Living Tombstone. Yes, the FNAF song people. But they've actually really come a long way since then, releasing a proper album and shortly after making the soundtrack for this game. They continue to be awesome to this day, but this soundtrack is a special thing. It really enhances the atmosphere of the whole story for me. The game is an okay horror game, it's got some interesting ideas, but it becomes a very special game with, in combination with the music as well as the background and the art design and where the devs came from. It's just so interesting the deeper you dig. Like, it may not be the same story as something that's brilliantly told, like something like Returnal. Returnal is kind of unmatched, actually, but it really is a special experience for me. Losing your mind has never been more stylish. Which leads me to our final specialty for today. Returnal is the first game I played when I got my PS5 recently, and oh god, would it, was it the best decision I've ever made in my life? Yes, Returnal is an absolutely incredible game. But while I could talk endlessly about its trick, which if you know, you know, the endless interpretations of its story and world and character, but for our purposes today, the soundtrack. This game's soundtrack is a beautiful marriage between John Carpenter, Modern Synthwave, and Alien. Yeah, the movie. Oh look, the Xenomorph YouTuber mentions Alien, take a shot! Speaking of Xeno, Returnal is about Selene, crashing onto an alien planet in search of a strange signal that only she should know what it means. She's then forced to relive that crash over and over and over, an almost biblical punishment for something she did. The planet is a really cool one too, Atropos. Conceptually, it plays with a lot of very cool concepts that I won't fully spoil, and it really feels like an alien world that could believably exist, which makes the twist near the end even cooler. Selene is a scout, space explorer, and mother. It's really cool to see a game with an older female protagonist as well. 
We need more of that. But anyway, the music. Returnal's soundtrack was created by Bobby Krulik, ah, I think that's close enough, also known as the Haxon Cloak. He's done some small work for films like Triple Nine, Almost Holy, and oh, uh, just this little film you may or may not have heard, or heard of, uh, Ari Aster's Midsommar. Yeah, learning that was a trip. Returnal's soundtrack, as I said earlier, is a beautiful combination of tones and feels. Exceptions excluded, Returnal is a very sci-fi sounding game. It feels like ancient warbles and echoes pasts long gone, mistakes made, people ruined. Crashes much like Selene's here on the planet Atropos, but unlike those long gone civilizations, Selene can't die. She's stuck here, reliving this horrible part of her life over and over and over and over and over, all while the planet ages behind her. She's stuck in her own personal sci-fi themed nightmare. I'm trying to keep it vague not to ruin it for people, but one of my favorite things in the game is when they use Blue Oyster Cult's Seasons Don't Fear the Reaper, a song that has a lot of meaning to the story and tone of Returnal. In one level, a massive boss slams the chord on the, of the song onto a giant organic looking organ. It haunts Selene and the player as well as she traverses this world. When I played this the first time hearing these simple tones, I was absolutely thrown off by what this could be. What does it mean? It was weirdly familiar, but I was unable to pinpoint why. What happened with this song? What is it? What am I hearing? Why is it driving me crazy? Finally seeing the true meaning changed everything. It's just a song. A simple song was able to change my entire perception of this game. A few chords and uses of licensed music allow me to completely alter my perception of a story. Music is magical. It lays the concrete that becomes the legacy of a story. Music is what we think of when we think of stories like Lord of the Rings, The Last of Us, Doom Eternal, Prey 2017, The Lion King, Midsommar, Dying Light 2, and Returnal. All of these stories are brought together by their incredible music. Music. It's the ties that bind were brought together by the mysterious pull of these songs. It shows us things that we can't possibly describe in words. Music keeps us alive. It haunts us. It drives us. It's there in our darkest moments. Yet, throughout all of that, it's created, curated, and crafted for no one else but us.